हेलो एंड वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू टूडे वी विल लर्न अबाउट द लिस फ्रेंक इंजरी द टॉपिक लिस फ्रेंक इंजरी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द अंडर ग्रेजुएट एज वेल एज द पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट आई हैव कैप्ट दिस लेक्चर इन अ वेरी सिंपल फैशन सो दैट ईच एंड एवरी वन कैन अंडरस्टैंड इफ यू लुक एट द टाइटल ऑफ दिस टॉपिक द कैरियर एंडिंग इंजरी why i have mentioned this because this lis frank injury actually has costed the career of a lot of football player a lot of sports people because the clear cut fracture we can see easily but there are subtle cases okay where they just ligamentous injury just due to improper diagnosis the cases are missed and after seeing today's lecture you will be able to learn how to avoid that misdiagnosis of the lis frank injury so the main focus of today's topic is how to avoid missing okay how to avoid the misdiagnosis of lis frank injury okay so let's start first of all just imagine you are in your casualty emergency room and a patient came to you and he is saying he is having pain in the mid aspect of the foot and he is a 30 year old male and he was playing football and while he was playing football somebody landed on his foot okay the clear picture is somebody landed on his foot now in football this landing how does this landing creates this lis frank instability let's see if you look at this picture okay if you look at this picture this guy okay this is landing on the feet of this man now just look at this next picture this guy has landed upon the feet of that man and if you compare this picture and this picture they are same so what happened is the ankle has gone into plantar flexion and in that plantar flex position somebody is giving push on this posterior side and the body of the weight is falling on this side this will create a huge amount of force that will result in damage of your lis frank ligament so this is the most common mechanism of injury in case of a sports individual the other causes due to trauma like motorbike accident there are the other causes fall down from height there are also the other causes but the most common presentation is after a sports injury okay now what are the clinical examination finding now that guy came to you you start you start always by asking the history then you look for the examination part in the examination part what you have to do in the examination part we check the tenderness after asking the patient to pinpoint the site of tenderness remember in foot and ankle always ask patient to pinpoint pinpoint the site of tenderness the site of tenderness this pointing part will literally ease your life okay you will look for the point of tenderness then you will think about the respective pathology here the patient will complain in case of a subtle injury the patient will complain of pain over the midfoot region and to pinpoint along the base of second metatarsal and the 
medial and the middle cuneiform these are the sides okay in case of a subtal injury now so you have examined the patient okay about the tenderness part now what next is now the next thing you have to do is ask the patient to stand on their feet so there are two possibilities better let's say three possibility the one condition he will not be able to stand at all so that's confirmed the injury is severe you're definitely going to get something on the x-ray now the second scenario is the patient is able to stand means he is able to wait there but when you ask him to like elevate his heel ask him to stand on the tip of toes so it means he is not able to do it now keep in mind we are talking about the midfoot sprain and the lisfranc injury and in that condition the patient is not able to stand on the tip of their toe we are not dealing here about the ankle sprain okay or high ankle low ankle sprain we are dealing about the midfoot sprain so he is not able to stand on the tip of toe it means injury is there but it's a subtle injury okay so this will create a suspicion now there are few patients who can stand on their foot they can wait there they can stand on the tip of their toes and even they can do the normal walking but what is their complaint okay in this category of patients they complains there occur pain in the midfoot okay when i starts running okay i had a history of trauma and now it has been one week since then when i start running it hurts okay otherwise i am able to walk pain free but it hurts this also could be a sign of injury of the isolated lisfranc ligament okay now for what next we should do we all know the next step is the getting the x ray okay now before jumping into the x ray just recall some basic points about the lisfranc what is the lisfranc ligament now lisfranc ligament it is a interosseous ligament interosseous ligament so it is between the two bones okay so it is between the two bones that's the one point second thing what it holds now there is a new system okay of labeling the bones in our foot and ankle where we label it as like this is a medial cuneiform we labeled it as mc1 okay this is c2 this is c3 okay cuneiform 1 cuneiform 2 cuneiform 3 and same with the metatarsal 1 metatarsal 2 and metatarsal 3 now lis frank ligament it is a interosseous ligament which is located in between the mc1 and mt2 so this is your lis frank ligament this is how we discuss about the lis frank ligament okay now so let's get in the x ray of this patient so we'll get which x ray we'll get the ap okay we'll get the oblique and we'll get the lateral view i'll tell you the importance of each and every aspect of the x ray <coughs> now this is the ap view so in the ap view this is a normal ap view of the foot to identify to diagnose the lis frank injury what we need to do we need to check the alignment of this metatarsal with the cuneiform and we have to check the spaces in between the metatarsal and the cuneiform now the first thing draw a line here okay now here so they are so there is no gap in between the cuneiform okay now second thing there is no gap in between the base look at the base okay just a second let's do it properly there is no gap in between the base of the metatarsal okay 
so that's the second point we have to look now third point is draw a line from this mc1 to the base of second meta base of first meta tarsal from the mc1 to the base of first meta tarsal so there is no disruption of this line and second line is this medial aspect of the base of second meta tarsal to the middle cuneiform base so this is all so these lines are parallel to each other okay there is no disruption okay so that's the one thing that we have to see in case of a ap view now this is the x ray okay now compared to x ray what we are seeing here the gap between these two mc1 and the mc2 okay second thing there is a gap between the base of the two first and the second metatarsal so this tells us that there is a injury okay so this is a lisfranc ligament injury okay that's the one point plus second point is the gap between the cuneiform is increased okay so there is a two injury one is a lisfranc ligament injury and the ligament in between the cuneiform that's also got ruptured okay so this is the one case now i'll tell you one more thing there is a sign known as candle flame sign this candle flame sign is visible in case of a lisfranc injury now just draw here and what do you see this just look like a candle flame okay just imagine this uh, the candle is inverted okay so that's a candle flame sign now next is now this picture shows us a clear cut okay intercuneiform diastasis okay so till now what we understood with the ap view what we have to notice we have to draw the lines we have to see the diastasis between the metatarsal bases and between the cuneiforms okay now previously they used to say 5 mm is the diagnostic criteria if the diastasis is more than 5 mm but now these days it has been changed it it is 2 mm okay so we have to look for a two so even a simple minimum diastasis that means even a minimal diastasis that suggests it is a lisfranc injury so that's about the ap view now the next thing we have to look is the next sign which is suggestive of lisfranc injury sometimes what happens is when this injury occur this ligament this ligament doesn't get ruptured from in between it gets ruptured from the end okay from from the end of these okay so and their ends are attached to the bone so that creates a avulsion injury it carries a fragment of the bone along with it and this avulsion injury creates a sign known as fleck sign you can see this portion this is a fragment of the bone okay so this is a fleck sign now next now let's look at the importance of the oblique view hello oh kal aa jaoge aap कल दे दोगे कल हाँ हेलो कल दे दोगे आप हेलो हेलो कल कल मॉर्निंग में दे दीजिए ना आप अभी तो मैं हुई नहीं है सर नहीं कल कल आऊंगा ना कल मॉर्निंग दे देना आप ठीक है नहीं कल देना मॉर्निंग में ठीक है Okay. Now let's look at the importance of the oblique view. Now the importance of the oblique view is what we have to see normally. Let's look at that. So this is a normal X-ray. 
so this is your cuboid bone and this is your this is your cuneiform this is your cuboid bone okay now draw a line on the medial aspect of a third metatarsal it should be in a be collinear to the line medial to the this lateral cuneiform okay now second line we have to draw medial to the fourth metatarsal and medial to the cuboid now they should be collinear to each other okay so it means your lateral this this is lateral this frank ligament complex okay or lateral this frank joint this is also normal so let's look at the abnormal x-ray in the abnormal x-ray what we have to look is draw a line along the base of the fourth metatarsal medially and now we look at the cuboid line so what is happening here okay you are looking there is a translation okay so that means it is a list frank injury okay i think that's clear is my point now the next thing is we have to look at the lateral view so in lateral view in the lateral view, this is a normal lateral view this is a first metatarsal this is the cuneiform this is the navicular and this is your talus but this is the line you have to draw now this is the abnormal x-ray this is the injured patient x-ray what you are seeing here is there is a dot of subluxation of your metatarsal okay so that what happens in case of a lisfranc injury that's another sign of the lisfranc injury now these all were the x-ray which we took in the non weight bearing part okay now, what is the importance of the weight bearing x-ray and the bilateral comparative views are they necessary no you have to learn in case of a clear cut fracture they are not necessary the weight bearing and the comparative view where do we get this weight bearing x ray in those cases where we are expecting there is a injury of the least frank ligament there is a isolated injury of the least frank ligament okay but on the non weight bearing x ray we are not able to see it we have a uh, like we have a strong suspicion about that injury So in that case, we get a weight bearing X-ray and the comparative views. Okay. Now regarding the comparative views, there is another indication of getting a comparative views uh, to know the anatomy in case of uh, in case there is we know there is injury while operating. How much reduction need to be achieved anatomically? In that case, we need a comparative view. Okay. So let's look at the how does this weight bearing X-ray creates a difference? Let's see. So this is X-ray. a guy okay who came to us you can see there is some okay some diastasis but this is less than 2 mm okay you can see the lines are parallel okay these lines are parallel these lines are parallel so we are thinking the diastasis is there but is less than 2 mm and there is no significant sign on the x ray on at view so what we did we asked for the but we had a suspicion because he has a pain over there okay over the specific second metatarsal base so what we did we went for the weight bearing views and see what we are looking here the distance got increased look at this distance weight got increased so that indicate it's a lisfranc ligamentous injury so in such cases we need a weight bearing views okay now next <coughs> now in the weight bearing series now this lateral x-ray okay this is also of the same patient the the previous one we got the lateral x ray this was non weight bearing no. and this is the weight bearing x ray can you make a difference between the two no but we have to focus here is look at the look at the gap between the fifth meta tarsal base and this cuneiform okay and here this gap is actually decreased or we can say the arch is lost okay so on weight bearing the arch is lost this also suggest okay this loss of arch this is another sign of lis frank injury okay that's why the weight bearing x ray are the important part of the investigation of the lis frank injury now with the help of these okay clinical parameters the radiological parameters which we learned we can reduce the chances of misdiagnosis and currently the chances of misdiagnosis are 
and we can reduce it by doing all of these <coughs> now this is a clinic this is a, a graphical presentation okay you can see here the gap oh, sorry you can see the gap and here it is decreased okay the arch is collapsed now the last finding is is cuboid compression fracture okay the last radiological finding is cuboid compression fracture okay now see this is the lateral part of the cuboid in case of a list frank injuries sometimes if you miss the diagnosis on the main ap view and the lateral view you should focus on the oblique view you should rule out this this indicates there is an injury of that a list frank ligament and then this indicate you should go for a weight bearing ap view that will help us in diagnosing the list frank ligament injury now this is all about the x-ray now is there any importance of the ct or mri now regarding the ct or mri which is better or should we get it done or should we should we avoid this now if you are getting the weight bearing x-ray there is no need of ct there is no need of mri in case of a diagnosis of a risk frank ligamentous injury with the help of x-ray you can easily diagnose these subtle cases you can easily diagnose these subtle cases so weight bearing x-ray and the comparative views are enough so don't jump into c2 or mri no so we are done with the clinical part now let's classify okay the, there are a lot of classification of the risk frank is an injury phenu cas marsan and this is the most simplest one and this is specifically for the subtle cases subtal less frank ligamentous injury the class 1 the stage 1 what happened in the stage 1 we have to look for the diastasis and the arch height loss if the diastasis is more than 5 mm then it sorry if the diastasis is more than 2 mm then it is significant 5 mm is outdated if the diastasis is less than 2 mm and there is no arch height loss then it is just the less frank ligament sprain means the less frank ligament goes stretched out okay now in stage 2 diastasis is there this means less frank ligament is ruptured okay less frank ligament is ruptured from the center okay but there is no arch height loss that's a stage 2 and in stage 3 there is a diastasis and there is a arch of the <coughs> arch of arch of the foot is lost okay so this is a basic classification So this is a presentation of the ligamentous stage one sprain where there is no diastasis, just stretching of the less frank ligament. Now there is an intrasubstantial rupture which will result in the in the diastasis. Okay. Now this is the stage three where we will see the ruptured ligament that will be as a diastasis and there is a arch height loss. Okay. So these are the three stages. Now let's come to the treatment part. How do we treat these this frank ligament injury now you have, you have you have diagnosed this this frank ligament injuries so regarding the treatment part we will classify it in a beautiful way in the stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 in case of a stage 1 now simply in case of a stage 1 where we know it is just a sprain it is not ruptured no arch height loss we just have to give the cast for 2 to 4 weeks and in a not weight bearing pattern okay now story does not end here what does it mean we all remember ki cast give the cast okay then remove the cast and then forget about it it is not like that okay give the cast for 2 to 4 weeks non weight bearing fashion then shift the patient to the partial weight bearing pattern for the next 4 weeks then after 4 weeks then after those 4 weeks ask the patient to full weight bear okay with the slab or with the cast Uh, and until unless patient is not walking pain free the story does not end there okay some cases it may get converted into a chronic injury these stages now let's talk about the stage 2 in case of a stage 2 there is a clear cut injury we have to do the surgery there is no other option but 
the confusion is whether to go for the close or whether to go for the open both are there in the literature some people use the close some people use the open the close one apply the uh, the close one like they don't want to disrupt the ligament or the other structure and open one they say we want to debride the joint so that there there should not be any problem in the healing part and in the stage 3 we know the option the surgery and we have to do it in a open way okay we have to do the orif now regarding the surgical part what are the various techniques we have available we have screw we have plates what else we have combination of those and we have the loop system we have the button system okay now which is better which is to you which one which is better and when to use a screw when to use plates okay now let's discuss that now regarding the screws okay till now the screws are ideal for this lis frank ligament number 1 screws are ideal no second thing but this there is a study okay it was done in like 2020 it suggest this screw actually damage the ligament as well as the cartilage while inserting it damages the ligament as well as the cartilage okay that's why this bridge plating system came into the system okay so regarding the screw you can put the screw from the dorsal surface of the second metatarsal to the uh, plantar uh, medial and the plantar aspect of this cuneiform this is one way you can also grow from this reverse side okay just one thing is apply the clamp first okay apply the tines of the clamp over the medial cuneiform and the metatarsal and then achieve the anatomic reduction then put the screw you can use a cortical screw you can use a cc screw as well 3.5 mm cortical and the 4 mm cc screw you can use the two screws now regarding the bridge plate now the problem with the bridge plate is it's removable okay it impinges the removable but the advantage is it does not affect the cartilage okay it does not affect the cartilage and the second problem is sometimes it uh, irritate the dpn dorsal uh, uh, deep peroneal nerve sometimes it irritates the dpn <coughs> now look at this case okay we will discuss about uh, we will discuss about this case also we are seeing intercuneiform screw and the lis frank screw okay now this is a suture button okay now which is better the screw or the suture button now screw provide the rigid fixation screw needs removal because screw gets broken whereas the suture button they are flexible okay they don't break okay and with screw they damage the cartilage so there are high chances of arthritis there are in case of suture disc or button there are less chances of arthritis now regarding the screw these lis frank screw are actually a positional screw just like syndesmotic screw don't use them to achieve the reduction use the tinaculum to achieve the reduction use these screws to maintain the reduction okay just remember this point now if you have got the intercuneiform diastasis as well as the lis frank diastasis now which part to be fixed first you know remember always fix intercuneiform first then second will be the lis frank screw this should be the pattern now regarding the post operative protocol in case of operative patient keep them non weight bearing for 4 to 6 weeks then after 6 weeks remove the slab depending on the condition after 6 weeks or 4 weeks you can remove the slab now start partial weight bearing okay for the next 4 weeks then full weight bearing for the uh, 8 to 12 weeks now screw removal this screw removal usually done at the 4 months otherwise in some patient patients it break the last slide is about the old lis frank injury suppose the case is 4 month old in that case Uh, the problem is not with the stage one. Problem is with the stage two and stage three. If the patient is belongs to stage two and it's four month old, then in that case, 
we can do open we can do close any of the two there is still no consensus available but regarding stage 3 it is always open reduction okay thank you do share follow and subscribe